I have made a lot of changes to my game, but more importantly, I have added a crafting system, quests, basically adding a proper game loop. But for those that don't know, this is my game that I have decided for now to call Skies of Avium. It is a 2D survival animation game in the sky with Greek mythology, combining games like Factorio, Forger, mod of Minecraft. And since you guys really enjoyed the first devlog, I'm here for another one. Let's do it! But before I talk about some of the big stuff that I've added to the game, I should probably give you some kind of heads up. The main character's design has changed. He's not human anymore. I always knew that I wanted the art by the brilliant Krishna Palacio to be temporary, but I am so happy with how this guy turned out. He's an actual shelf man. I'm the shelf man! I didn't make this myself, by the way. My really, really talented art friend did. He's gold. Say thank you. And before you're asking about how does this work with the story and the lore, I got that figured out too. But we'll talk about that later. Anyway, that does mean, however, that throughout the video, um, you might see it jumping back and forth a bit between the, the shelf character and the, the previous human character. So. Uh, be be warned, I guess. Now, in the last video, I added the main inventory system that's incredibly important for the game and for adding machines and such for the automation later on. But what I didn't talk about yet was the crafting. And with that, I actually even completely dismissed the items. I am so sorry for pushing you away last time. Totally my bad and I take full responsibility. No worries, but do it again and I'll cut your hands off. Basically, like Minecraft, this game is very much item focused. You get items, you use the items to make items, you use those again to make different items, etc. But, like, how? Oh yes, I can finally talk about scriptable objects and my editor scripts. I am so excited! This is my item class. It is a scriptable object that basically has anything that a single item could ever have. Which then in turn shows what kind of item it is. Stuff like its name, its sprite, is it breakable, is it a machine, is it farmable, what does it drop when broken, or what items do you need to craft it. It's super useful when you have different mechanics because I can just access anything from whatever item I'm working with. And since it's a scriptable object, I have a neat overview of all my items separated over all kinds of folders here. But there is one thing. Making a new item is kind of a chore. And if you remember, I do not like manual labor. The workflow right now is incredibly tedious and it's way too easy to make so many mistakes. Basically, I right click inside of a folder, go to scriptable objects and click item. I then have to fill in every single field that's relevant to this new item and hope that I don't miss anything. Then when that's done, if it's a breakable object like a machine or something, I have to go and make a new prefab there. I need to give it the right sprite, the right colliders and the right components to act as a proper object within my world and then also a script for whatever it's supposed to do in the first place. But then I also need to make sure that the item and the prefab are linked and that the item is added to a main list of all the items so it's actually part of the game and that's just way too much to remember like way too much even if i decide to write it all down in like a guide or something for how to add a new item i will undoubtedly make mistakes and for forget things because i get distracted very very easily holy so i made an editor tool Basically, I made this item controller script that has all the fields that a regular item could have. Using the MyBox plugin by DeadCows, I hide certain fields unless I've enabled a boolean, like machine related fields will only appear in the inspector when I stated that this is a machine in the first place. Just to make sure that this inspector window does not get too incomprehensible. But doing it this way, I can hide most of the stuff unless I need them. So it's instead of being this tall, you can barely hear me, it's this tall. Not exactly, but kinda. But then when I have everything filled in, all the relevant data, I just press this neat little add new item button and it'll create a new scriptable object for me exactly where I want it to go. It'll set all its variables to whatever I set it as in here. And if I decided that it's an object that requires a prefab, it will create a new game object, give it the right components like a sprite renderer, a box collider and whatever else it may need. And then save that to the right folder as well. Honestly, making new items and prefabs is so easy now. Rather than struggling and possibly forgetting things, I can actually just make things now. I can make a new machine in literally a minute. 
where it would normally take me possibly five to make sure that I didn't forget everything. And that is wild to me. But okay, now I have a way to make items very easily. And with that, I also just made a bunch of items already. Now, how about that crafting? Well, I really, really like Minecraft's crafting system, but that is so specific to the game, I cannot take that. Cause that, kids, is what we call stealing. Stealing is bad, unless you're 10 years old and you steal your friend's very powerful Pokemon card because he was kind of annoying about it. He's, he was very aware of how powerful it was. I'm so sorry for stealing your Pokemon card, but instead of going the Minecraft way, I figured I'd do it in a different way that a lot of games actually use. By just showing the items you've unlocked and those that are craftable. Like in Stardew Valley, you unlock items and then when you have the right items in your inventory, you can click it. If not, it's kind faded out. And in my game, unlocking items simply happens by having had every single item that is required to craft it in your inventory at least once. But let me give you an example. My crafting window is currently very much empty, but if I were to break this tree down for example and pick up the wood, you can see everything that I can craft using this wood. I honestly don't think that the code behind this is very interesting because it's basically everything I said just now, but then turned into proper syntax. Anyway, now I have this really nice list of items that have crafting recipes and that I have also unlocked. What do I do now? I'm gonna make it clear to the players somehow what it is that they're trying to make, what it is that they need, and whether they can craft it at that moment. So it is time for everyone's favorite thing in game development. UI stuff. I'm sorry, I don't know why I lied to you there. I just do not like UI stuff. But hey, it, it looks fine, I just, I, I didn't really like making it. When you click on an item you want to craft, it opens up this panel on the left that shows you what you're trying to craft, as well as a little description which allows me to be uh, silly from time to time. Then below it shows the items required, together with how much of it you need, and through what color the text has, it shows whether you have enough of that item in your inventory or not. If you do, the craft button will light up, and if you don't, um, it, it won't. Now there are a few things I really love about this panel, quality of life stuff that I just decided to add early on. Imagine you want to make this item an iron gear. It requires two stone gears and four iron ingot. Cool, but what if you do not have those yet and you want to gather the items to make sure that you can craft those too, but you don't know how to make those stone gears anymore either. You could try and find them in the list of course, but, and oh man I love this, but what you could also do is just press the stone gear in the recipe list and it'll show the recipe for that one. Can you tell how excited I am about that? It is honestly such a useful feature. It is exactly the kind of feature I would want from a game like this. But I can hear you asking, and I know that I can hear you asking this because I have actually been asked this a couple times. Why? Why can I craft all these things? What's the point of the game? What do I do? Well, Remember when I said this, and before you're asking about how does this work with the story and the lore, I got that figured out too. But we'll talk about that later. Yep, it's later. So here's the story I have in mind, uh, drawn very, very terribly by myself in Photoshop. You're this random person on earth living their life, and one day you're like, Dude, th this kind of sucks. This world is terrible. I bet I could make a better one if I had to. Clearly, this upsets Zeus, the god, so he kind of just turns you into a bookshelf. Not unlike Zeus, if you know any mythology. But then he realizes um, that this could make for a fun bath. Or maybe Poseidon tells him this or something, maybe. So he challenges you. You're allowed to prove yourself and make a better world than he has made. But if you fail, he'll just throw you in Tartarus. And then Poseidon is like, yeah, I just kind of wanted to troll Zeus, so I'll help you. And with him, all the other Olympians all have their own quest lines as well, that together will guide you to eventually be able to fight Zeus. That is the idea, and this, this right here is the quest book. I got a game loop. I officially have a game loop now. You have a goal, you have something to do, and you continue doing that thing until you technically 
reach the end. So cool! Now, of course, this is only the intro and you do not see the other chapters yet of all the other gods, but they will show up as soon as you meet them, which I am uh, trying to do very slowly so the pacing doesn't feel like it, it's all coming towards you uh, at, at the same time and it freaks you out and you get overstimulated and you close the game. That will, that will kind of suck. But each chapter has a quest line that goes from the most basic item relevant to that god or in the case of the intro just uh, just a starting item and then guides you to a point that makes you feel powerful in that god's eyes or again the intro gives you a basic idea of how the game works each quest requires just an item very much like the crafting menu it checks whether you have the item or items in your inventory and if you do you can redeem your rewards do that and the connected quest or quests unlock as well you see that the line just changed colors as I finished that quest. Isn't that awesome? My biggest struggle with the quest though has been balancing it properly and uh, finding the right quests and the right items for each gods and seeing how much I need of everything and if it just fits the pacing of the game like I said before. I am trying to use Myro for this but I feel like it's all going to be decided through playing and just iteration uh, very much like the crafting recipes. I cannot expect to know all of this already when there's still so much left to figure out. But until then I got some awesome news. You can actually play this game right now for free. It's on itch.io under the name Skies of Avium. The itch.io version will not be updated much if at all honestly but it will give you all the chance to at least give it a shot and see what you think if you have any thoughts overall on the the concept if you have any feedback who knows whatever you get out of it maybe it's just something you want to try it does not have any music and not a lot of audio overall so uh, just be aware of that i guess however if you would like more consistent updates on the game you can actually you could even already get a steam key i have started a patreon supporting me there would allow me to spend more of my time making the game skies of avium or the devlogs and you know less time doing things that I I don't want to do <laughs> there's a link in the description below there are some really cool benefits to it if you're interested go check it out and if you have more ideas for benefits just let me know um, I would gladly listen but yeah don't forget the biggest thing is the steam key a key that immediately gives you access to whatever updates I put out there so go check that out but until then you can also now wishlist the game on steam that is completely free and it will help me so much with visibility and also it'll reach more people once the game is finally out you can find all the links down below and I would really appreciate it thank you all so much for watching see you in the next devlog where we're gonna be talking about machines I'm so excited!